Calpurnia! Peace ho! Caesar speaks. Calpurnia. Here, my lord. Stand you directly in Antonius's way when he doth run his course. Antonius? Caesar, my lord. Remember in your speed to touch Calpurnia. For our elders say that the sterile, touched in this holy chase, shake off their barren curse. I shall remember when Caesar says, do this, it is performed. Set on and leave no ceremony out. Bid every noise be still. Peace yet again. Who is it in the press that calls on me? I hear a voice shriller than all the music cry, Caesar, speak. Caesar is turned to hear. Beware the Ides of March. What noise is that? A soothsayer bids you beware the Ides of March. Set them before me, so let me see their face. Bello, come from the throne. Look upon Caesar. What says that to me now? Speak. Beware the eyes of match. <laughs> She's a dreamer. Let us leave her. Pass. Will you go see the order of the corpse? No. I pray you do. I am not game so. I do lack some part of that quick spirit that is an Antony. But let me not hinder Cassius your desires. I will leave you. Tell me, good Greeks, can you see your face? No, Cassius, for the eye itself cannot see but by reflection by some other things. Tis just and very much lamented, Brutus, that you have no such mirror as will turn your hidden worthiness into your mind's eye, that you might see your shadow. I have heard where many of the best respect in Rome, except a mortal Caesar, speaking of Brutus and groaning underneath the sage's yoke, have wished that the noble Brutus had his eyes. Into what dangers would you lead me, Cassius, that you would have me seek into myself for that which is not in me? Therefore, good Brutus, be prepared to hear, and since you cannot see yourself so well as by reflection, I, your glass, will modestly discover to yourself that of which you yet know not of. And do not be je jealous of me, gentle Brutus. Were I not a common laugher, did you used to stay with ordinary oaths, my love to every new protester? If you do know that I fall on men and hug them hard and after scandal them, or if you know that I profess myself to bank with it, with all the wrath, then hold me dangerous. What means this shouting? I do fear the people choose Caesar for their king. Aye, do you fear it? Then I must think you would not have it so. I would not, Cassius, yet I love him well. But wherefore do you hold me here so long? What is it that you would impart to me? If it be aught toward the general good, set honor in one eye and death in the other, and I will look on both indifferently. For let the gods so speed me as I love the name of honor more than I fear death. <laughs> Another general shout. Why, man, he doth bestride the narrow world like a colossus. And we petty men walk under his huge legs to peep about and find ourselves dishonorable graves. Men is sometime our masters of their fate. The fault, dear Brutus, is not in our stars, but in ourselves that we are underlings. Brutus and Caesar, what should be in that Caesar? Why should that name be sounded more than yours? Write them, yours is his fair name. Sound them, it doth become the mouth as well. Weigh them, it is as heavy. Conjure with them, Brutus will start his spirit as soon as Caesar. Now in the name of all the gods at once, upon what meat doth this our Caesar feed that he has grown so great? Age, thou art shamed. Rome, thou hast lost the breed of noble bloods. When went there by an age since the great flood, but it was famed with more than with one man? When could they say till now that talked of Rome, that her wide walls encompassed but one man? Now is it Rome indeed and room enough when there is in it but one man? Oh, you and I have heard our father say there once was a Brutus that would have broke the eternal devil to keep his stay in Rome as easily as a king. That you do love me, I am nothing jealous. What you would work me to, I have some aim. Oh, how I thought of this and of these times I shall recount hereafter. For this present, I would not, so with love I might entreat you, be any further moved. What you have said, I will consider. And what you have to say, I will with patience hear, and find a time both meet to hear and answer such high things. Till then, my noble friend, chew upon this. Brutus had rather be a villager than to repute himself a son of Rome under these hard conditions as this time is like to lay upon us. I am glad that my weak words have struck thus much show of fire from Brutus. The games are done and Caesar is returning. As they pass by, pluck Casca by the sleeve. He will, after a sour fashion, tell you what hath proceeded, worthy note to that. 
I will do so. Look you, Cassius. The angry spot doth glow on Caesar's brow. All the rest of it she is great. Her Hermes' cheek is pale. Cicero was with such fair and fiery eyes as he seen in the capital, being crossed in conference by some senators. Cassius will tell us what the matter is. Antonius, Caesar, let me have men about me that are fat. Sleep in a den, as such sleeper nights. Young Cassius has a lean and hungry look. He thinks too much. Such men are dangerous. Fear him not, Caesar. He's not dangerous. He's a noble Roman and well-given. <laughs> Would he were fatter, but I fear him not. Yet if my name were liable to any fear, I do not know the man I should avoid so soon as that spare Cassius. He reads much. He's a great observer and looks quite for the deeds of men. He loves no plays, as thou dost, Antony. He hears no music. Seldom he smiles, and smiles in such a sort as if he mocked himself and scorned his spirit which could be moved to smile at anything. Such men as he never be a Parsi so else they behold the greater than themselves, and therefore are they very dangerous. I'd rather tell thee what is to be feared than what I fear, for always I am Caesar. Up, come on my right hand, for this ear is deaf, and tell me truly what thou thinkst of him. You grab me by the cloak. Would you speak with me? Hi, Casper. Tell us what hath chance today that Caesar looks so sad. Why, you were with them, were you not? I should not ask them, Casca, what had chance. Why, there was a crown on him, and being off him, he put it by with the back of his hand thus, and the people fell shouting. What was the second voice for? Why, for that too. The crowd shouted thrice. What was the last cry for? Him? Why, for that too. Was the crown offered him thrice? Ah, then he put it by thrice, and every time, why not his neighbors shouted. Who offered him the crown? Why, Antony. Tell us the manner of it, gentle Casca. I can as well be hanged as to tell the manner of it. It was mere foolery. I did not mark it. I saw Mark Antony offer him a crown. But well, it wasn't one of those crowns, it was one of those coronets. Anyway, he offered him a crown once, and he put it by with the back of his hand. But, uh, to my thinking, he seemed fain to have it. He was then offered the crown again, and he put it by again. But, to my thinking, he seemed loath to lay his fingers on it. He was offered the crown a third time, and he put it the third time by. And at that putting by, the brother men hooted and clapped their chapped hands and threw up their sweaty nightcaps and uttered such a deal of stinking breath that it had almost choked Caesar, for he swooned and fell. And for my own part, I durst not laugh for fear of opening my lips and receiving the bad air. But soft, I pray, what did Caesar swoon? Fell at marketplace, and foamed at mouth and was speechless. Tis very like he hath the falling sickness. No, he hath it not, but you and I and honest Casca, we have the falling sickness. I know not what you mean by that, but Caesar did fell. And if the tag right people had clapped and hissed him as he pleased and displeased them, as if you the players in the theater, I am no true man. Uh, what said he when he came unto himself? Married he was, when he perceived that the common herd was glad to refuse the crown, he plucked me up the doublet and offered them his throat to cut. And I had been a man of any occupation. If I had not taken him out of word, I may as well go to hell among the rogues. For so he, or so he fell. And when he rose, he asked if he had said or done anything amiss. For he desired their worship to believe it was his infirmity. From the crowd, three or four wenches cried, Alas, good soul, and forgave them with all their hearts. There is no heed to be taken of them. If Caesar had stabbed their mothers, they would have done no less. And thus he came, thus sad away. Aye. Did Cicero say anything? Aye, he spoke Greek. To what effect? Nay, and I'll say I'll never look you in the face again. But those who understood him smiled and nodded at one another, but for my own part, it was Greek to me. Will you sup with me tonight, Casca? No, I am promised forth. Will you dine with me tomorrow? Aye, if I be alive, and your mind hold, and your dinner worth the eating. Good, I will expect you. Do so. Farewell, both. What a blunt fellow is this grown to be. He was quick metal when he went to school. So is he now in the execution of any bolder noble enterprise, yet he puts on this hardy form. 
His rudeness is a sauce to his good woods, which gives men stomachs to digest his words with better appetite. And so it is. For this time I will leave you. Tomorrow, if you please to speak with me, I will come home to you. Or, if you will, come home to me and I will wait for you. I will do so. Till then, think of the world. Well, Brutus, thou art noble, yet I see the honorable metal may be wrought, but that it is disposed. Therefore, it is meet that every noble mind keep ever with their likes, for who so firm that cannot be seduced? Caesar doth bear me hard, but he loves Brutus. If I were Brutus and he were Cassius, he should not humor me. I will this night, with several hands, and at his window throw, as if they came from several citizens, writings all tending to the great opinion that Rome holds of his name, wherein, obscurely, Caesar's ambition shall be glanced at. After this, let Caesar seat him sure, for we will shake him, or worse days endure. Good evening, Casca. Brought you Caesar home? Why are you breathless? Why stare you so? Are you not moved when the sway of earth shakes like a thing unfirm? O oh, Cicero, I have seen tempests, which is when the scolding winds have rived the knotty oaks. I have seen the ambitious ocean swell and rage and foam to be exulting in the threatening sky. But never till tonight, never till now, did I see a tempest dropping fire. Either there is a civil strife in heaven, or the world too saucy with the gods and senses them to rain destruction. Why saw you anything more wonderful? A common slave, you know him well by sight, held up his left hand, which did flame and burn like twenty torches joined. But his hand, not sensible to fire, remained unscorched. I have not since put up my sword. Against the capital, I met a lion, who glared upon me and went surly by without annoying me. And upon them, a heap, a hundred ghastly women, transformed with their fear, screamed the men, all in fire, looking up and down the streets. And, and so the bird of night sat even at noonday upon the marketplace, hooting and shrieking. When these things do so conjointly meet, let men not say, these are their reasons, for they are natural, for they are pretentious things unto the climates that they point upon. Indeed, it is a strange disposal at a time, but men may construe things after their fashion, clean from the purpose of the things themselves. Come, Caesar, to the capital tomorrow. He doth. Bid Antonius send word to see you tomorrow. Good night, then, Casca. This disturbed sky is not to walk in. Farewell, Cicero. Who's there? A Roman. Casca, by your voice. Good ears. What night is it, Cassius? A very good night to honest men. Whoever knew the heavens meant it so? Those that have known the earth so full of faults. For mine own part, I've walked about the streets, submitting me unto the perilous night, and thus, embraced task as you see, have bared my bosom to the thunderstone. And when the cross blue lightning seemed to open up the breast of heaven, I did present myself, even in the aim and very flash of it. But wherefore did you so much tempt the heavens? It is part of men to fear and tremble when the mighty gods, by token, send their most dreadful heralds to astonish us. You were dull, Casca, and those sparks of life that should be in a Roman you do want, or else you use not. You look pale and gaze and cast yourself in wonder to find the strange impatience of the heavens. But if you will consider the true cause, why all these fires, why all these gliding ghosts, why these birds and beasts of quality and kind, why old men fool and children calculate, why all these things change from their ordinances, their natures and performed faculties? Why you would find that heaven hath infused them with these spirits to make them instruments of fear and warning unto a monstrous state? Now, Casca, could I name to thee a man more like this dreadful night that thunders, lightens, opens graves, and roars as doth the lion in the capital? A man no mightier than thyself or me in personal action yet prodigious groan and fearful as these strange eruptions are. It is Caesar that you mean, is it not, Cassius? Let it be who it is, for Romans now have thews and limbs like to their ancestors, but woe the while, our fathers' minds are dead, and we are governed by our mother's spirits. Our yoke and suffering show us womanish. Indeed, 
They say the senders tomorrow intend to make Caesar their king. He shall wear his crown by sea and land, save here in Italy. I know why I will wear this dagger then. For Cassius from bondage will deliver Cassius. Therein, ye gods, you make the weak most strong. Therein, ye gods, you tyrants do defeat. Nor stony towers or walls of beaten brass, nor airless dungeon, nor strong wings of iron shall be retentive to the strength of spirit. But life, being weary of these worldly bars, never lacks the power to dismiss itself. If I know this, know all the world besides. That part of tyranny that I do bear, I can shake off at pleasure. So can I. So can every bondman who bears the power to cancel his captivity. And why should Caesar be a tyrant then? Poor man, I know he would not be a wolf, but that he sees the Romans are but sheep. He were no lion, we're not Roman hinds. Those that with haste will build a mighty fire, beginning with weak straws. What trash is Rome? What rubbish and what awful when it serves as a base of matter to illuminate such a vile thing as Caesar. But, O oh grief, where hast thou led me? I perhaps speak this in front of a willing bondman, and I know that my answer must be made. Yet I am armed, and dangers to me are indifferent. You speak to Casca, and such a man is no fleering telltale. Hold my hand, be factious for redress of these griefs. And I shall put this foot of mine as far as the one who goes farthest. There's a bargain made. Know you, Casca, have moved already some of the noblest minded Romans to undergo with me an enterprise of honorable, dangerous consequence. And by this, I know that they stay for me at Pompey's porch. For this night, there is no stir walking in the streets. And the complexion of the element in favors the work we have at hand, most bloody, fiery, and most terrible. Stand closer up, for here comes one in haste. Tis Senna, I know him by his gate, he is a friend. Senna, where haste you so? To find out you. Who is that, Metellus member? No, it is Casca, one incorporate to our attempts. Am I not stayed for, Senna? I'm glad on it. Tis a fearful night. There are two or three of us have seen such strange sights. Am I not stayed for? Tell me. You are. O Cassius, if you could but win the noble Brutus to our party. Be you content, good Senna, and lay this paper on the praetor's chair that Brutus may but find it. Throw this in at his window and set it up with wax on old Brutus's statue. All this done, repair to Pompey's porch where you shall find us. Is Decius Brutus and Trebonius there? All but Metellus Simber, who has gone to seek you at your house. I will hide and so obey these papers as you told me. All this done, repair to Pompey's porch. Come, Casca, you and I will yet ere day see Brutus at his house. Three parts of him is ours already, and the man upon our next encounter yields him ours. What, Lucius, ho! I cannot, by the progress of the stars, give guess how near today. But Lucius, I say, I would it were my fault to sleep so soundly. But when, Lucius, when? Awake, I say, what, Lucius? Call him, my lord. Get me a taper within my study, Lucius. When it is lighted, come and call me here. I will, my lord. It must be by his death. For my part, I know no personal cause to spurn at him, but for the general, he would be proud. How that might change his nature? There is the question. It is the bright day that brings forth the adder and craves wary walking. Crown him, and then I grant we put a sting in him that at his will he may do danger with. It is, the abuse of greatness is when it disjoins remorse from power. And to speak truth of Caesar, I know not when his affections swayed more than his reason, but tis a common proof that lowliness is young ambition's ladder, whereto the climber upward turns his face. But when he once attains the utmost rounds, he then unto the ladder turns his back, looks in the clouds, scorns the base degrees by which he did ascend. So Caesar may, less than he may, prevent. And since the quarrel will bear no color for what he is, fashion it thus, that what he is augmented would run to these and these extremities. And therefore, think of him as a serpent's egg, which hatched would, as his kind, grow mischievous and kill him in the shell. That 
for a burst in a crossing, sir. So to the widow for a thing I found. This paper does so well, and I am sure it did not lie there when I went to bed. Get you to bed again. It is not day. Is not tomorrow the Ides of March? I know not, sir. Go to the calendar and bring me work. I will, sir. Oh, the exaltations whizzing in the air give so much light that I may read by them. <clears throat> Brutus, thou sleepest, awake, and see thyself. Shall Rome and the sea speak, strike, redress? Brutus, thou sleepest, awake. Such instigations have often been dropped where I took them up. Shall Rome and see? Must I piece it out? Shall Rome stand under one man's awe? What? Rome? My ancestors did from the streets of Rome. The Tarpon dry when he was called a king. Speak, strike, redress. Am I entreated? Speak and strike. O Rome, Thou makest thee a promise. If the redress will follow, then thou hast thy full petition at the hand of Brutus. Sir, March is worse than forty days. Tis good. Uh, go to the gate, somebody knocks. Since Cassius first did wet me against Caesar, I have not slept. Between the act of a dreadful thing and the first motion, all the interim is like a phantasma or a hideous dream. The genius and the mortal instruments are then in council, and in the state of man, like to a little kingdom, suffers then the nature of an insurrection. Sir, tis your brother kisses at the door, without desire to see you. Is he alone? No, sir, there were more with him. Do I know them? No, sir, their hands are plucked about their ears, and half their faces buried in their clothes, that by no means I may discover them by any mark of favor. Let him enter. They are the faction. Oh, conspiracy. Shamest thou to show thy dangerous brow by night when evils are most free? And then by day, where wilt thou find a cavern dark enough to hide thy monstrous visage? Seek not conspiracy. Hide it in smiles and affability. For if thou hath thy native semblance on, not Erebus itself were dim enough to hide thee from prevention. I think we are too bold upon your rest. Good morrow, Brutus. Do we trouble you? I have been awake at this hour, up all night. Know why these men that come along with you? Yes, every man of them. And no man here but honors you, and every one doth wish that you had but the opinion of yourself that every noble Roman bears of you. This is Trebonius. He is welcome here. This Thessius Brutus. He is welcome too. This Casca, this Senna, and this Metellus Simber. They are all welcome. What watchful cares do interpose themselves betwixt your eyes and night? Shall I entreat a word? Here lies the east. Shall not the day break here? No. Oh, pardon, sir, it doth, and yon gray lines that fret the clouds are messengers of day. You shall confess that you are both deceived. Here, as I point my sword, the sun arises. Give me your hands all over one by one. And let us swear our resolution. No. Not an oath. If not the face of man, the sufferance of our souls, the times of use, if these be motives weak, then break off the times, and let every man hence their idle beds, so let high sided tyranny rain on till each man drop by lottery. But if these, as I am sure they do, bear fire enough to kindle cowards and steal with valor the melting spirits of women, then punch them. What need we any spur but our own cause to prick us to redress? What other bond than the secret Romans that have spoken word and will not palter? And what other oath than honesty to honesty engaged? That this shall be, and we will fall for it. Swear priests, cowards, and men cautious, old feeble carriers and such suffering souls that welcome wrongs. 
Unto man calls a swear, as men doubt. But do not stain the even virtue of our enterprise, nor the insuppressive metal of our spirits. To think that, or our cause, or our performance were in need of oath, when every drop of blood that every Roman bears, and nobly bears, is guilty of a several bastardy, if he break the smallest particle of any promise passed from him. But what of Cicero? I think he will stand very strongly with us. Should we sound him? Oh, name him not. For he will not follow anything that other men have started. Then leave him out. Indeed, he is not fit. Shall no man be touched only but Caesar? Decius, well urged. I do not think it meet that Mark Antony, so well beloved of Caesar, should outlive Caesar. I think we will find in him a shrewd contriver, and you do know, by his means, if he does approve that, shall go as far to annoy us all. So to avoid, let Antony and Caesar fall together. Our course will seem too bloody, Caius Cassius, to cut the head off first and hack the limbs like wrath and death and envy afterwards. For Antony is but a limb of Caesar. Let us be sacrificers and not butchers, Caius. As we all stand up against the spirit of Caesar, in the spirit of men there is no blood. Oh, that we may then come by Caesar's spirit and not dismember him. But alas, Caesar must bleed for it. And so, gentle friends, let us kill him boldly but not wrathfully. Let us carve him as a dish fit for the gods, not hew him as a carcass fit for the hounds. And let our hearts, as subtle masters do, stir their servants into an act of rage and after seem to chide. This shall make our purpose seem necessary and not envious, which shall appear to the common eyes. We shall be called perjurers and not murderers. And for Mark Antony, think not of him, for he can do no more than Caesar's arm when Caesar's head is cut. But I fear him much for the engrafted love he holds of Caesar. Alas, good Cassius, think not of him. If he do love Caesar, then all that he can do is take thought and die for Caesar. And that were much he should. For he is given to sports, to wildness, and much company. There is no fear in him. Let him not die, for he will live and laugh at this hereafter. Count the clock. The clock hath stricken three. It is time to part, but it is doubtful yet whether he will come forth today or no, for he is superstitious grown of late. Quite from the main opinion he held once of fantasy and dreams and ceremonies. It may be these apparent prodigies, or the unaccustomed terror of this night and the persuasion of his auditors that may hold him from the capital today. Never fear that. If he be so reserved, I can persuade him. For he loves to hear that unicorns be betrayed with trees, and bears with glasses, lions with holes, elephants and elephants with holes, and men with flatterers. But when I tell him he hates flatterers, he says he does. Being then most flatterer, let me work. For I can give his humor the true bent, and I will bring him to the capital. By the eighth hour, is that the uttermost? Be that the uttermost, and fail not then. Caius Ligarius doth bear Caesar hard, because he has spoke well of Pompey. I wonder if none of you have thought of him. Now, good Metellus, go along by him. He loves me well, and I have given him reason. Send him but hither, and I will fashion him. The morning comes upon us. We'll leave you, Brutus, and friends, disperse yourselves. But remember what you have said, and show yourselves true Romans. Good gentlemen, look fresh and merrily. Let not our looks put on our purposes, but bear it as our Roman actors do, with untired spirits and formal constancy. And so good morrow to every one. Girl, Lucius, fast asleep. Kiss me. Enjoy the honey-heavy dew of slumber. Thou hast no figures nor no fantasies which busy cares draws in the brains of men. Therefore thou sleepest so sound. Who is my lord? Portia, what mean you? Wherefore rise you now? It is not for your weak condition thus to commit your health to the raw and cold morning. Nor yours neither. You've ungently brutus stolen from my bed, and 
And yesterday I couldn't stop her. You suddenly arose and walked about, musing and sighing with your arms across. And when I asked her what the matter was, you stared upon me with ungentle looks. I urged you further. Then you scratched your head and too impatiently stamped with your foot. I insisted. Yet you answered not. But with an angry waft of your hand, you signed for me to leave you. So I did. I mean, straight in that impatience would seem too much enkindled, and without hoping it was but an act of humor, which sometimes half his hour with every man. You would not let me eat more to fall from your sleep, and to work so much upon your shape that it didn't have much prevail upon your conditions. I should not know you for this. You, my lord, make me acquainted with your cause of grief. I am not well in health, and that is all. For this is wise, and were you not in health, you would embrace the means to come by it. Why, so I do. Good Portia, go to bed. But is Brutus sick? And is it physical to walk unbraced and suck up the humors of the dank morning? But is Brutus sick and will he steal at his wholesome bed to dare the vile contagion of the night and tempt the roomy and unpurged air to add on to my sickness? No, I agree with you have some sick of such a thing or mine, which by the way approach of my place I ought to know of. And upon my knees I charm you. I am whom once commended beauty, and all who are bound with love, and I great vow that did incorporate and make us one that would fold to me, yourself, your path. Oh, you are heavy, and what men tonight have had to resort to you, for if there have been some six or seven who did hide their faces even from darkness. You are not gentle, Portia. I would not need if you were gentle with us. Within the bonds of marriage, tell me, Brutus, is it accepted that I should know no secrets that appertain to you? And am I yourself, but as it were, in sort or limitation, to keep with you at meals, comfort your bed, and talk to you sometimes? Dwell I within the suburbs of your good pleasure? If it be no more, Portia's Brutus is hardly not his wife. You are my true and honorable wife, as true as the ruddy drops that visit my sad heart. If this be true, then should I know the secret? I grant I am a woman, but with all a woman that bore Brutus to life. I grant I am a woman, with all a woman, well reputed, Cato's daughter. Think you I'm no stronger than my sex, being so fathered and so husbanded? Tell me your counsels. I will not disclose them. I made strong proof of my constancy, giving myself a voluntary wound here in the thigh. Can I bear back with patience and not find those my secrets? Ye oh, gods, render me worthy of this noble wife. Good Portia, go in a while. And by and by thy bosom shall partake the secrets of my heart. All my engagements I will construe to thee, all the character of my sad brow. Leave me with haste. Nor heaven nor earth have been at peace tonight. Thrice hath Capernaum in her sleep cried out, Help, ho, they murder Caesar. Who's within? My lord? Go bid the priest do present sacrifice and bring me their opinions of success. I will, my lord. What mean you, Caesar? Think you to walk forth? You shall not stir out of your house today. Caesar shall go forth. For the things that threaten me now have looked but on my back. When they shall see the face of Caesar, they are banished. Caesar, I never stood on ceremonies, yet now they fright me. There is one within, besides the things that we have heard and seen, recounts the most horrid sights seen by the watch. A lioness hath whelped in the streets, graves have yawned and gilded up their dead. Fierce, fiery warriors fought upon the clouds in ranks and squadrons in right form of war, which drove with blood upon the capital. The noise of battle hurtled in the air. Horses did neigh, dying men did groan, and ghosts did shriek and squeal about the streets. Caesar, these things are beyond all use, and I do fear them. What can be avoided whose end is purposed by the mighty gods? Yet Caesar shall go forth. For these things that threaten me are to the world in general as to Caesar. When beggars die, there are no common seen. The heavens themselves blaze forth the death of princes. Cowards die many times before their deaths. The valiants never taste of death but once. Of all the things that I have heard, it seems to me most strange that men should fear that death, a necessary end, will come when it will come. What say the augurs? They would not have you stir forth today, plucking the entrails of an offering forth, for they cannot find a heart within the beast. The gods do this in shame of cowardice. Caesar should be a beast without a heart. If he should stay home today for fear, no, Caesar shall not. 
For danger knows full well that Caesar is far more dangerous than he. We are two lines littered on the same day, and I, the elder and more terrible, and Caesar shall go forth. Alas, my lord, your wisdom is consumed in confidence. Do not stir out of your house today. Call it my fear and not your own that keeps you in the house. We'll send Mark Antony to the Senate house, and he shall say that you are not well today. Let me, upon my knee, prevail in this. Mark Antony shall say I am not well, and for thy humor, I will stay home today. Be as he is Brutus, he shall tell him so. Caesar, all hail. Good morrow, worthy Caesar. I come to fetch you to the Senate house. And you are come in very happy time, to bear my greeting to the senators and tell them I will not come today. Cannot is false, and that I dare not, falser. I will not come today, tell them so, Decius. Say he is sick. Shall Caesar send a lie? Have I in my conquest stretched my arm so far as to not tell old Greybeard the truth? Decius, I will not come today, tell them so. Uh, most mighty Caesar, let me know some cause, lest that be laughed at when I tell them so. The cause is in my will, I will not come, that is enough to satisfy the Senate. However, for your private satisfaction, and because I love you, I will let you know. Calpurnia here, my wife, stays me at home. She dreamt tonight that my statue, like a fountain with a hundred spouts, did run pure blood, and many lusty Romans came, smiling, and did bathe their hands in it. And these does she apply for warnings and portents and evils imminent, and on her knee hath begged that I will stay home today. This dream is all misinterpreted. It was a vision fair and fortunate. Your statue spouting blood in many pipes in which so many smiling Romans bathe signifies that from you great Rome shall suck. Reviving blood, and that great men shall press. For tincture stains, relic incontinence, this by Calpurnia's dream is signified. In this way have you well expounded it. I have, and you've heard what I can say. And know it now, the Senate have concluded to give this day a crown to mighty Caesar. If Caesar shall send them word he will not come, their minds may change. Besides, it were a mock, up to be rendered for someone to say, break up the Senate till another time, when Caesar's wife shall meet with better dreams. If Caesar hid himself, shall they not whisper? Lo, Caesar is afraid. Pardon me, Caesar, for my dear, dear love to our proceedings bid me to tell you this, and reason to my love is libel. <laughs> How foolish do you fear seem now, Calpurnia? I'm ashamed I did yield to them. Uh, go fetch me my toy, before I go. Ah, and little Republius has come to fetch me. Tomorrow, Caesar. Tomorrow, Publius. What? Brutus, are you stirred so early too? Good morrow, Casca, Caius Ligarius. I was ne'er so much your enemy as that same Aggie which hath made you lean. What is to clap? Caesar, tis struck an age. Oh, I thank you for your pains and courtesy. Ah, see, Mark Antony. That rebels who clung the knights is not standing up good morrow, Antony. So too, most noble Caesar. What, Trebonius, I have an hour's talk in store for you today. Remember that you call on me today. Be near me that I may remember you. Caesar, I will. And so near will I be that your best friends will wish I had been further. Good friends, go in and taste some wine with me, and we, like friends, will straightway go together. That every light is not the same, O Caesar. The heart of Brutus yearns to think upon. Caesar, beware of Brutus. Take heed of Cassius. Come not near Casca. Have an eye to Cinna. Trust not Trebonius. Mark well Metellus Simber. Decius Brutus loves thee not. There is but one mind in all these men, and it is bent against Caesar. If thou beest not immortal, look about you. Security gives way to conspiracy. The mighty gods defend thee. Thy good friend, Artemidorus. If thou read this, O Caesar, thou mayest live. If not, the fates with traitors do contrive. Good pretty girl, run to the Senate house. Stay not to answer me, but get thee gone. Why dost thou say? To know my errand, my now. I would have had thee there and here again, ere I could tell thee what thou shouldst do there. O constancy, be strong upon my side, set a huge mouth between my heart and tongue. I have a man's mind, but a woman's might. How hard is it for women to keep counsel? Art thou here yet? My dear, what should I do? Ride to the capital and let announce? 
And shall we turn to you and nothing else? Yes, bring me word, girl. My lord, look well, for he went sickly forth. And take good note with Caesar, with Caesar don't what suitors press to him. Her, what, what noise is that? I hear none, madame. For thee, listen well, I hear a bustling rumor like a fray, and the wind brings it from the capital. Here is madame, I hear nothing. What other woman, which way have been? At my own house, good lady. What is the call? But the night thou were lady. Is Caesar had gone to the capital? Madame, not yet. I go to take my stand to see him pass on the capital. Thou hast some suits, Caesar, hast thou not? That I have, lady. If it will please Caesar to be so good to Caesar, I shall beseech him to befriend himself. Why, no so any horns intended towards him? None that I know of him. Much that I fear may chance. Good morrow to him. Here, the street is narrow. The throne that follows Caesar, that the hills has come in senators and praetors and suitors, for crowd of women almost to death. I will seek a place more for it, and then follow Caesar as he comes along. Oh, I must go in. Oh, Brit, the heavens speed me, and I have to press. Sure, the girl heard me. Brutus has the suit that Caesar will not grant. Run, Lucius, commend me to my lord. Say I am there. Come to me again and bring me word what he doth say to thee. Hail Caesar, read this schedule. To bring his best desire to speak, at your best pleasure, this his humble suit. O oh, Caesar, read mine first, for mine's a suit that touches Caesar nearer. Read it, great Caesar. That which is nearest to us should be last served. Delay not, Caesar, read it instantly. What, a fellow man? Caesar, give place. <laughs> Trevonius knows his time, for look you, Brutus, he draws Antony out of the way. Where is Metellus Simber? Let him present his suit presently to Caesar. He is addressed, dressed near and second him. Casket, you are the first to let raise your hand. Are we all ready? What is the midst of Caesar and his Senate shall address? Most high, most mighty, and most poisoned Caesar, Metellus Simber. Pose thy before your seat, a humble heart. I must prevent this timber. These couchings and lowly courtesy might set fire to the blood of ordinary men, and turn pre-ordinance and first decree to the law of children. Do not be fond to think that Caesar bears such rebel blood, that falls true quality and melted fools. What, sweet words? Low crooked curtsies and base spaniel fawning? Thy brother by decree is banished. If thou dost bend and pray and fawn for him, that I spur thee out of the way. For Caesar doth not wrong, nor will he without cause be satisfied. Is there no voice more worthy than my own? To speak so worthy in Caesar's ear. To appeal for my banished brother. I kiss thy hand, but not in flattery, Caesar, desiring thee that Publius Simber may have an immediate freedom of repeal. What, Brutus? Pardon, Caesar, Caesar, pardon. As far as thy foot doth Cassius fall, to beg and franchise me for Publius Simber. I could well be moved if I were as to you. If I could pray to move, prayers would move me. But I am as constant as the northern star. 
of whose true fixer resting quality there is no fellow in the firmament. The sky is painted with unnumbered sparks, and they are fire and they doth shine. But there's all but one doth hold his place. But in the world tis furnished with men, and men are flesh and blood and apprehensive. But in the numbers I do know but one that unassailable holds his rank. Unshaked in motion, and that I am he, let me a little show of this, and even in this, that I am constant that Simber should be banished, and constant do remain to keep him so. O oh, Olympus, great Caesar, doth not Brutus bootless kneel? Speak, hands for me! Of half the worth of your swords made rich 
with the most noble blood of all this world. I beseech you, if you bear me hard. Now lest your purple hands do reek and smoke, to fill your pleasure. Live a thousand years, I shall not find myself so weak to die. No place will do you please me so, no mean of death. As here by Caesar and as you, I cut off the choice and master spirits of this age. O oh, Antony, beg not your death of us, though now we must appear bloody and cruel, as by our hands in this our present act you see we do. Yet see you but our hands in the bleeding business they have done. Our hearts you see not. They are pitiful, and pity to the general wrong of Rome. As fire drives out fire, so pity, pity, hath done this deed on Caesar. From your part, to you our swords have led in points, Mark Antony. Our arms and strength of malice, and our hearts and brother's temper do receive you in all kind words, good thoughts, and reverence. Your voice shall be as strong as any man's in the disposing of new dignities. I doubt not of your wisdom. Let each man render me his bloody hand. First, Marcus Brutus, will I shake with you. Next, Caius Cassius, do I take your hand. Now does his Brutus, yours. Next, yours, Medalus. Now yours, Cinna. My valiant casket, yours. And last, but not last in love, good Trebonus. Gentlemen, all, alas, what shall I say? My credit now stands on such slippery ground that one of two ways you must conceive me, either a coward or a flatterer. That I did love Caesar, this is true. If then thy spirit look upon us now, shall I not grieve, dear Ben Nagel, to see thy enemy making his peace, shaking his bloody fingers on thy foes, most noble in the presence of this course. Had I as many eyes hast wounds, weeping as fast as they stream forth thy blood, it become better me to close in terms of friendship with thy enemies. Pardon me, Julius. Here hast thou bade brave heart. Here didst thou fall. Here thy hunters stand. Sign in thy spoil and crimson thy life. O world, thou the forest of this heart, and O world, the heart of thee, how like a deer struck in by many prances, here didst thou lie. Mark Antony. Pardon me, Caius Cassius. The enemies of Caesar shall say this, then the friend of his cold modesty. I blame you not for loving Caesar so, but what compact do you mean to have with us? Will you be pricked in number of our friends, or shall we on and not depend on you? Therefore I took your hands, but it was indeed swayed from the point looking down on Caesar. Friends I am with all of you, and love you all. Upon this hope it was indeed where and where am Caesar was dangerous. Or else was this a sad spectacle, our reasons are so full of good regard. That were you Antony, the son of Caesar, you should be satisfied. That's all I seek, and I'm wherever suitor that I may. Produce his body to the marketplace, that I may, in a pulpit, as I becomes a friend, speak in order of his funeral. You shall, Mark Antony. Brutus, a word with you. You know not what you do. Do not consent that Antony speak at his funeral. Know you not what the crowd may be moved by the words he will utter? By your pardon, I will myself into the pulpit first and show the reason of our dear Caesar's death. What Mark Antony shall speak, I will protest he speaks by me and by permission, and that we are to intend him. Caesar shall have all true rights and lawful ceremonies. It shall advantage us more than do us wrong. I know not what may fall, I like it not. Mark Antony, here, take you Caesar's body. You shall not in your funeral speech blame us, but devise all good you can of Caesar. And say you do it by our permission, else you shall have no hand at all about his funeral. And you shall speak in the same pulpit whereto I am going after my speech is ended. Be it so, I desire no more. Then prepare the body and follow us. Pardon me, thou being peace of earth, that I am meek and gentle with these butchers, though art the ruins of the noblest man that ever lived in the tide of times. Woe to the hand that shed this costly blood. Over thy wounds now do I prophesy, which like dumb maps do ope their ruby lips to beg voice and utterance on thy tongue. 
A curse shall light upon the limbs of man. Domestic fury and civil strife shall come over all the parts of Italy. Blood and destruction shall be in use and dreadful objects so familiar that mothers shall but smile when they behold their infants quartered with the hands of war. All pity choked with the custom of fell deeds as Caesar's spirit raging revenge with ink by its side come hot from hell. And in a monarch's voice in these combines, cry havoc and let slip the dogs of war that this custom fell deeds shall smell above the earth with carrion men groaning for burial. You serve Octavius Caesar, do not. I do, Mark Anthony. Caesar did write for him to come to Rome, did he not? He did, and he received his letters as coming, and bid me say to you by word of mouth, O oh, Caesar! Thy heart is big. Get thee apart and weep. Passion, I see, is crying from thine eyes. Seeing those beads of sorrow begin to water, is thy master coming? He lies tonight with the seven leagues of Rome. Post back with speed and tell him what thou chanced. Here is a morning Rome, a dangerous Rome. No Rome for safety for Octavius, sir. Hi hence and tell him so. Yet stay a while. Thou shalt not back till I discourse into the marketplace. There I shall try in my oration how the people take the cruel issues of these bloody men, according to which thou shalt discourse to young Octavius of the state of things, lend me your hand. Audience, friends, Cassius, go you into the other street and part the numbers. Those that will hear me speak, let him stay here. And those that will follow Cassius, go with him, and public reasons shall be rendered of Caesar's death. I will hear Brutus speak. I will hear Cassius and hear your reasons of the severity of your letter. Be patient till the last. The noble Brutus is ascended. Silence! Oh. Romans, countrymen, lovers. Hear before my cause, and be silent that you may hear. Believe me for mine honor, and have respect to mine honor that you may believe. Censor me in your wisdom. Awaken your senses that you may the better judge. If there be any in this assembly, any dear friend of Caesar's, to him I say that Brutus's love to Caesar was no less than his. If then that friend demand, why Brutus rose against Caesar, this is my answer. Not that I loved Caesar less, but that I loved Rome more. Had you rather Caesar were living and die all slaves than that Caesar were dead to be all free men? As Caesar loved me, I weep for him. As he was fortunate, I rejoice at it. As he was valiant, I honor him. But as he was ambitious, I slew him. There is tears for his love, joy for his fortune, honor for his valor, and death for his ambition. Who is here so base that may be a bondman? If any, speak, for him I have offended. Who is here so rude that may be a Roman? If any, speak, for him I have offended. Who is here so vile that will not love their country? If any, speak. For him I have offended. I pause for reply. None! None! none. none. Then none have I offended. I have done no more to Caesar than you shall do to Brutus. The question of his death is enrolled in the capital. His glory not extenuated, wherein he was worthy, nor his offenses enforced, for which he suffered death. Here comes his body, mourned by Mark Antony, who, though he had no hand in his death, shall benefit from his dying, a place in the commonwealth, as which of you shall not. With this I depart, that, as I slew my best lover for the good of Rome, I have the same dagger for myself, when it so pleases my country to need my death.
summer's evening in his tent that then he overcame the nearby. Look at this place as Cassius ran his dagger through. See what rent the envious Cassimene. Through this, the well beloved Brutus stabbed and plucked his cursed steel away. Mark how the blood of Caesar followed it. As rushing out the doors to be resolved, if Brutus so unkindly knocked or no, for Brutus, as you know, was Caesar's angel. Oh, judge you gods, how dearly Caesar loved him. This was the most unkindest cut of all. Oh, hideous spectacle. Oh, noble Caesar. Oh, woeful day. Oh, you trying to let kill him. Revenge about seek. Burn, fire, kill, slay. Let not a traitor live. Here is the will. And under Caesar's seal, to every Roman citizen he gives, 75 drachmas. Put down Benjamin! Now let it work, mischief, thou art afoot. Take thou what course thou wilt. Listen, Octavius, Brutus and Cassius are levying powers. We must straight make head, therefore, let our lines be combined, our means stretched, our best friends made, and let us go sit presently in council. How open pearls must serve us to answer. Let us do so, for we are at the stake and made a battle with many enemies, and some that smile have in their hearts, I fear, millions of mischief. They mean this night in Sardis to be quartered. The greater part, the house in general, are come with Cassus. Hark, he is arrived. Most noble brother, you have done me wrong. Oh, ye gods, wrong I mine enemies. And if not so, how should I wrong a brother? Brutus, a sober form of yours hides wrongs, and when you do then, Cassius, be content. Speak your grief softly, I do know you well, before the eyes of both our armies here, for which I perceive nothing but love from us. Let us not wrangle. Bid them move away, then in my house, enlarge your griefs, and I will give you audience. Volumnius, bid our commanders to lead their charges a little from this ground. Lucilius, do you the like, and let no man come to our tent till we have done our conference. Let Lucius and Titinius guard the door. That you are wrong me doth appear in this. You have condemned and noted Lucius Pella of taking bribes here of the Sardians, where in my letters, praying on his side, because I knew the man were slain at all. You wrong yourself to write in such a case. It is not me in times such as this that every nice offense shall bear his comment. Let me tell you, Cassius, that you are much condemned to an itching palm to sell and mark your offices for gold to undeservers. Aye, an itching palm, you know that you are Brutus that speak this, or else by the gods this speech were your last. Oh yes, the name of Cassius honors this corruption. Chastisement, therefore doth hide his head. Chastisement. Do you remember March? The Ides of March remember? Did not great Julius Caesar bleed for justice's sake? What villain touched his body and did stab and not for justice? What? Shall one of us that struck the foremost man in all this world, but in support of robbery? And so shall we contaminate our fingers with base bribes and sell the mighty space of our honor for so much trash as that can be grasped thus. I'd rather be a dog and bay the moon than such a Roman. Brutus, bay not me, I will not endure it. You forget yourself. I am a soldier, older in practice, and abler than yourself to make condition. Go to, Cassius, you are not. I am. I say you are not. Urge me no more, I shall forget myself. Away, slight man. Is it possible? Hear me, for I will speak. Must I give way and room to your rash collar? Shall I be frightened when a madman stares? Oh, ye gods, ye gods, must I endure all this? All oh, this? I? More? Fret till your proud heart break, and show your slaves just how choleric you are. And make your bondmen tremble. Must I budge? Must I observe you? Must I stand and crouch under your testy humor? By the gods, ye shall digest the venom of your own spleen, though it do split you. 
and from henceforth, I will use you for my mirth. Yeah, for my laughter when you are waspish. Is it come to this? You say that you are a better soldier. Let it appear so. Make your vaunting true, and it will please me well. From my part, I will be glad to learn of such noble men. You wrong me every way. You wrong me, Brutus. I said an elder soldier, not a better one. Did I say better? Whether you did, I care not. I did not. When Caesar hath lived, he durst not have thus moved me. Peace, peace. You durst not so have tempted him. I durst not. No. What, durst not tempt him? For your life you durst not. Do not presume too much upon my love. I shall do what I may be sorry for. You have done that you should be sorry for. There is no terror, Cassius, in your threats. For I am armed so strong in honesty that they pass by me as the idle wind, which I respect not. I sent to you for gold, which you denied me. I can raise no money by any vile means. By heaven, I would rather coin my heart and drop my blood for drachma than to wring from the hands of peasants their vile trash by any indirection. I sent to you for gold to pay my legions, which you denied me. Was that done like Cassius? Should I have answered Caius Cassius so? When Brutus becomes so covetous that he locks the rascal counters from his friends, be ready, gods, with all your thunderbolts dashing to pieces. I denied you not. You did. I did not. He was but a fool that brought my answer back. Brutus hath rived my heart. A friend should bear his friend's infirmities, but Brutus makes mine worse than they are. I do not until you practice them on me. You love me not. I do not like your faults. A friendly eye can never see such faults. The flatterers might not, but yours appear as high as huge Olympus. Come, Antony and young Octavius, come. Take revenge alone on Cassius, for Cassius is a weary of the world, hated by ones he loved, braved by his brother, checked like a bondman, all his faults observed, set in a notebook, learned and conned by rock, to cast into my teeth. I could wipe my spear from mine eyes. Here is my dagger, and here my naked breast. Within it a heart dearer than Brutus is mine, richer than gold. If thou beest a Roman, take it forth. I that deny thee gold will give my heart. Strike as thou didst at Caesar, for I know that when thou hatest him the worst, thou lovest him more than thou ever lovest Cassius. Sheep your dagger. Be angry when you will, it shall have scope. Do what you will, for dishonor shall be human. O oh, Cassius, you are yoked with a lamb with as much anger as flint bears fire, and, with much enforced, shows a little spark, and cold is straight again. Hath Cassius lived to be but mirth and laughter to his br Brutus when grief and blood ill-tempered vexeth him? Alas, I was ill-tempered too. Do you confess so much? Give me your hand. And my heart too. O oh, Brutus, what's the matter? Have you not enough love to bear with me when the rash humor that my mother gave me makes me forgetful? Yes, Cassius. And from henceforth, when you are over earnest with your Brutus, he'll think your mother chides and hate you be. Let me go in to see the generals. Tis some grudge between them. Tis they not leave they be alone. You shall not come to them. Nothing but death shall stay me. How now? What's the matter? For shame, you generals. What do you mean? Love and be friends as two men should be, for I have seen more years, I'm sure, than ye. How vilely doth this cynic rhyme. Get hence, Sirrah, saucy woman, hence. Bear with her, Brutus, tis her fashion. I'll know her fashion when she knows her time. What should the wars do with these jigging fools? A companion, hence. Away, away, be gone. Lucilius and Titinius, bid the commanders to lodge their companies tonight, and come yourselves and bring Lasala immediately to us. Lucius, a bowl of wine. I did not think you could have been so angry. Oh, Cassius, I am sick of many griefs. Of your philosophy, you make no use if you make place for accidental evils. No man bears as much sorrow as I do. Portia is dead. Ha, ah, Portia? Yes, she's dead. How escaped I killing when I crossed you so? 
O oh, insupportable and touching loss, upon what sickness, impatience of mine absence, and grief that young Octavius and Mark Antony have made themselves so strong. With this, her death, the tidings came, and as she fell distract, her servants soon swallowed fire, and died so, even so. O oh, ye mortal gods! Speak no more of her. Give me a bowl of wine. In this I bury all unkindness, Cassius. My heart is thirsty for that noble pledge. Come in, Titinius. Ah, welcome, good Missal. Now sit me close about this taper here, and we will call and question our necessity. Portia, art thou gone? No more. I pray you. Masala, I have received in my letters that young Octavius and Mark Antony have come down upon us with a mighty power, bending their expedition toward Philippi. Myself hath letters of the self-same tenor. With what addition? That by order of prescription and bills of outlawry, Octavius, Antony, and Lepidus hath put to death a hundred senators. Therein our words are not alike. For mine speaks of seventy senators that have died by their proscriptions, Cicero being one. Cicero one? Cicero is dead, and that by order of prescription. Have you had letters of your wife, my lord? No, Masala. Nor nothing in your letters rid of her? Nothing, Masala. That methinks is strange. Why well, ask you? Hear you aught of her? No, my lord. No, as you are a Roman, tell me truth. Then like a Roman bear the truth I tell, for certain she is dead, and that by strange manner. Good Portia, we must die. Masala, with meditating that she must die once, I have patience to endure it. Even so, great men, great losses should endure. I have as much in art as this as you, but yet my nature cannot bear it so. Well, to our work alive, what do you think of marching to Philippi presently? As you not think it good, your reason? It is this. Tis better that the enemy seeks us. So shall he waste his means, weary his soldiers, and doing himself offense, while we, laying still, shall be full of rest, defense, and nimbleness. Good reasons of force must give place to better. The people twixt Philippi and this ground do stand but under forced affection, for they have grudged us contribution. The enemy, marching alongside them, by them shall make fuller a number up. Come on, refreshed, new added, and encouraged. With advantage shall we cut him off, if at Philippi we do face him there the people at our back. Hear me, good brother. Under your pardon, you must note beside that we have tried the utmost of our friends. Our legions are brimful, our cause is ripe, and the enemy increases every day. We, at the height, are ready to decline. There is a tide in the affairs of men, which taken at the flood, leads on to fortune, omitted, and all their lives are then bound in shallow and in misery. On such a sea are we now afloat. We must take the current when it serves or lose our ventures. Then we here will go on, will along ourselves and meet them at Philippi. The night crept upon our talk, and nature must obey necessity. There is nothing else to discuss. No more, good night. Early tomorrow we will rise and hence. Farewell, good Masala. Good Titinius, good night. Noble, noble Cassius, good night and good repose. Oh, my dear brother, this was an ill beginning of the night. Everything is well. Good night, my lord. Good night, good brother. Good night, my lord. Farewell to everyone.
Where is thy instrument? Here in the house. Forgive me, I am much forgetful. What, thou speakest so drowsily? Poor knave, I blame thee not. Thou art overwatched. Call Claudius and his men, and uh, I'll have them sleep on the cushions in my room. Farewell, and Claudius. Calls, my lord. I pray you, sirs, come in my room and sleep. It may be I shall raise you by and by on business to my brother Cassius. So please you, we will stand and watch your pleasure. I will not have it so. I pray you, sirs, lie here. Look, Lucius, here's the book I sought for so. I left it here on this table. I was sure your lordship did not give it to me. Bear with me, for I am much forgetful. I, my lord, ought to please you. You do? I trouble thee much, but thou art willing. It is my duty, sir. I should not push thy duty past thy might. I know how young bloods are always looking for rest. I have slept, my lord, already. It was well done, and you shall sleep again. I will not hold thee long. If I do live, I will be good to thee. so much wrong to wake thee. But if thou dost not at all, thou will break us thy instrument. I will take it from thee. And so, good girl, good night. not the leaf that turned down where I last was reading. Ah, here it is. Why did 
thou criest out so? Did me, my lord? Yes, he did. See you not anything? Not that, my lord. Go and commend me to my brother Cassius. Bid him set on his powers be times before, and we will fall. It shall be done, my lord. Now, Antony, our hopes are answered. You said the enemy would not come down, but keep the hills in upper region. It proves not so. Their battles are at hand. They mean to warn us at Philippi, here, answering before we do demand of them. Tut, I am in their hearts, and I know wherefore they do it. They can be content to visit other places and come down, with fearful bravery, thinking by this face, to fasten their thoughts that they have courage, but tis not so. Prepare you, generals, the enemy comes on in, Gally and Kier, the bloody signs of battle are all hung out, and something needs to be done immediately. Octavius, lead your badly softly upon the left hand of the even field. Upon the right hand I, keep thou the left. Why do you cross me in this exigent? I do not cross you, but I will do so. Stand fast, Titinius, we must out and talk. They stand and would have parley. Mark Antony, shall we give sign of battle? No, Caesar, we will answer on their charge. Make forth, the general will have some words. Stir not until the signal. Words before blows, is it so, countrymen? Not that we love words better, as you do. Good words are better than bad strokes, Octavius. In your bad strokes, Brutus, you give good words. Witness the hole you made in Caesar's heart, crying, Long live, hail Caesar! Antony, the posture of your blows are yet unknown, but as for your words, they rob the hybel bees and leave them honeyless. Not stingless, too. Oh, and soundless, too, for you have stolen their buzzing, Antony, and very unwisely threat before you sting. Villains, you do not so, when your vile daggers hacked one another in the side of Caesar. You fawned like hounds and bowed like bondmen, kissing Caesar's feet while damned Casca like a cur behind struck Caesar in the neck. Oh, you flatterers. <laughs> flatterers. Brutus, thank yourself. This tongue would not have offended so today if Cassius might have ruled. Come, come, the cause. If our grave makes us sweat, the proof of it will turn to redder drops. Look, I draw a sword against conspirators. When think you that the sword goes up again? Never. Till Caesar's three and thirty wounds be well avenged. Or shall another Caesar have added slaughter to the sword of traitors? Caesar, thou canst die by the hand of traitors unless thou bringest thee with them. So I hope I was not born to die on Brutus's sword. Oh, wert thou the noblest of thy strain, thou couldn't have a most noble death. A peevish schoolboy, worthless of such honors, and a master and a reveler. Old Cassius, still! Mark Antony, away. Defiance, traitors, hurl me in your teeth. If you dare fight today, come to the field. If not, when you have stomachs. Why now, the wind blows, swell billow, and swim bark. The storm is up, and all is on the hat horizon. Hark, Lucilius, how a word with you. My lord. Masala. What says my general? Today is my birthday, as this very day was Cassius born. Give me thy hand, Masala, and be my witness that against my will, as Pompey was, am I compelled to set all of our liberties upon one battle. Coming from Sardis, on our former ensign, Two mighty eagles fell, and there they perched, gorging and feeding on our soldiers' hands, who from Philippi here consorted us. Believe not so. Even so, Lucilius. Now, most noble Brutus, the gods stand friendly that we may, lovers in peace, lead on our days and age. But since the affairs of men still rest uncertain, let's reason with the worst that may befall. If we shall lose this battle, this is the last time that we will speak together. What are you then determined to do? By the rule of that philosophy, by which I do blame Cato for the death which he caused himself, I know not how. But I do find it cowardly and vile, for fear of what might fall, so to prevent the time of life, arming myself with patience to stay to providence of such high powers that govern us below. So you are content to be led in triumph through the streets of Rome? No, Cassius, no. 
Think not so highly of that noble Roman, that ever Brutus were to be bound to Rome. He has too great a mind. But this same day must end the work the Ides of March begun. And whether we shall see each other again, I know not. Take the everlasting farewell to take. Forever and forever, farewell, Cassius. If we do see each other again, we shall smile. If not, this parting was well made. Forever and forever, farewell, Brutus. If we meet again, we will smile indeed. If not, tis true this parting was well made. Why then lead on, oh, that a man might know that this day's business ere it come. But it sufficeth that the day will end, and then the end is come. Come home, away. Give these bills unto the legions on the other side. Let them set on at once, for I perceive cold Demeter and Octavius' wing, and sudden push gives them the overthrow. Ride, ride, Miss Ola, ride, and let them all come down. Look, Titinius, look, the villains fly. Myself have to mind when turn to anyone. The sense in here mine was turning back. I slew the coward and did take the fire. Fly further off, my lord, fly further off. Mark Antony is in your tents, my lord. Fly further off, Lord Cassius, fly further off. This hill is far enough. Look, Titinius, look. Are those my tents where I proceed to fire? They are, my lord. If thou ever lovest me, Titinius, mount thou my horse and hide thy spurs in it until he brings you up to yonder troops and brought you back again, where I may rest assured whether yonder troops are friend or enemy. I will be there even with the Penderus, get higher on that hill. My sight is ever thick. Regard to Tinius and let, tell me what thou knowest about the field. This day I breathe first, time has come round, and where I did begin, there I shall end. My life has run its compass. Zero, the news. Oh, my lord, Titinius is in close roundabouts, with horsemen that make him on the spur, and he spurs on. Now they're almost on him. Now Titinius, now some light. He lights too. Oh, he's taken. And hark. They shout for joy. Come down, behold no more. O oh, coward that I am, to live so long, to see my best friend taken before my face. Come hither, Sira. In Parthia did I take thee prisoner, and saving of thy life, that whatsoever I did be thee do, thou shouldst attempt it. Come, come now, keep thine oath. Take this good sword that ran through Caesar's bowels, search this bosom. Stand not to answer. Here, take thou the hilts, and when my face is covered as tilts now, guide thou the sword. Caesar, thou art revenged, even with the sword that killed thee. So, I am free, yet would not so have been thirst. I have done my will. O oh, Cassius, far from this place, pen to pen there shall run, where right, never Roman shall take note of him. Comfort, Cassius. Where did you leave him? 
All this consulate with tenders his bombing on this hill. Is not that he that lies upon the ground? He lies not like the living. Is not that he? No, this was he, Masala. But Cassius is no more. O setting sun, as in thy red rays doth sink tonight, so in his red blood Cassius's day is set. The sun of Rome is set. Clouds, dews, and dangers come. Our days are done. Mistrust in my success hath done this deed. Mistrust of good success hast done this deed. O hateful error, melancholy's child, why dost thou show to the applause of men the things that are not? O error soon conceived, thou never comest unto a happy birth, but killest the mother that engendered thee. Pinders, where art thou, Pinders? Speak him to Tinius, whilst I go to meet the noble Brutus, thrusting the report of this into his ear, I may say thrusting it, for piercing steel and darts and venom shall be as welcome to the ears of Brutus as tidings of this sight. Hi, Masala, and I will seek Pinders the while. Why didst thou send me forth, brave Cassius? Did I meet, not meet thy friends, and did not they? Put on my brow this wreath of victory, and bid me give it thee. Didst thou not hear their shout? Alas, thou hast misconstrued everything. Behold thee, take this garland on thy brow. Thou Brutus, bid me give it thee, and I will do his bidding. Brutus, come apace, and see how I regard it. Kind Cassius. <sighs> By your leave, gods, this is a Roman's part. Come, Caius his sword, and find Catinius his body. such as these, the last of the Romans, fare thee well. It is impossible that Rome should breathe thy fellow. Friends, I owe more tears to this man than I shall pay. Come hence to his body, sent to Thasos. We shall not have his funeral at our camp, lest it discomfort us. Come, Lucilius and young Cato, let us to the field. Brutus is safe enough. I do assure you that no enemy shall take alive the noble Brutus. 
the gods defend him from such great shame. If you do find him, or alive, or dead, he will be found like Brutus, like himself. This is not Brutus, friend, but I assure you a prize in less than work. Keep this man safe. Give him all kindness. I'd rather have such men my friends than enemies. Go on and see whether Brutus be alive or dead, and bring us word into Octavius' tent. Uh, everything is chance. Come, poor remains of friends, rest on this rock. Sit thee down, Lucius. Slaying is the word, and is a deed in fashion. Hark thee. What? I, my lord? No, not for all the world. Peace, then no words. I'd rather kill myself. Dardanius. Shall I do such a deed? What ill request did Brutus make to thee? To kill him, Lucius. Look, he meditates. Good Volumnius, come hither, list a word. My lord? Why, Volumnius? The ghost of Caesar hath appeared to me several times tonight. As sword as once, and this tonight, fill up my fields. I know my hour is come. Not so, my lord. Nay, good Volumnius. Thou seest the world today, and how it goes. The enemies have already beat us to the pit, and it would be worthier than to leap in ourselves and tarry till they push us. Good friend, knowest thou when, when we went to school together? Even in those days of old, I prithee, hold us up my sword hilt while I do run upon it. That's not an office for a friend, my lord. What man is that? My master's man, Strato. Where is my master? Free from the bondage you are in, Sala. The conquerors can but make a fire of him, for Brutus only over ever came himself, and no man else hath honor by his death. So Brutus shall be found. I thank thee, Brutus. Thou hast proven the silliest saying true. All that serve Brutus, I will entertain them. Fellow, will thou bestow thy time with me? Aye, if not thou wilt what I need to you. Do so, good Vassala. How died my master, Strato? I held the sword and he did run on it. 
Octavius, then take him to follow thee, that did the latest service to my master. This was the noblest Roman of all. All the conspirators save only he that did an envy of great Caesar. He only, in the general honest thoughts, in common good to all, made one of them. His life was gentle, and the elements so mixed in them that nature might stand up and say to all the world, this was a man. According to his virtue, let us use him with all respect and rights of burial. Within my house his bones tonight shall lie, posed like a soldier, ordered honorably. So call the field to rest and let's away. Depart the glories of this happy day. <laughs> 